Call of Cthulhu, Dark Corners of the Earth, is a first-person horror game which combines intense action and adventure elements as you plummet headlong into the tormented life of Jack Walters. A private investigator by trade, Jack is touched by the Cthulhu mythos, and for the remainder of his life, finds himself haunted by visions and thoughts of things that should not be, as he struggles to retain his sanity and his humanity in the dark corners of the Earth. Okay, hello everyone! Welcome to Call of Cthulhu Dark Corners of the Earth, the game with an extraordinarily long title. I just like saying it. Call of Cthulhu Dark Corners of the Earth. Where to start with this game? Okay, this is one of my favorite games of all time. This is a complete and utter classic to me. I seriously don't even know where to start. Well, it's a survival horror game. It is steeped in the Cthulhu mythos, which, despite the fact that I've actually never read an H.P. Lovecraft, uh book or story of any sort, and I don't know very much about the Cthulhu mythos and all of that stuff. Despite that fact, I love the Cthulhu mythos. I don't know why, but I love it. And given that a, a big theme of the mythos seems to be about a lack of understanding and insanity and incomprehension at something that is so inhuman that you can't even, like, well, comprehend it. I'm thinking maybe the fact that I don't understand it and don't know much about it might actually add to it. Add to its otherworldliness, and its bizarreness, and its strangeness. But yes, I really like the... Just the cthulhu -y influences in it, and elements to it. There's just something very creepy about it. Very creepy. Okay, so... Again, where to start with this game? Okay, well, it was made by Head First Productions, which is a company you've probably never heard of, because this is almost the only thing they've ever done. They worked for a very long time on this game, and had a very long production cycle, much longer than they wanted it to be. It came out for Xbox in 2005, and then it came out for PC in 2006. And very shortly after it came out, it uh, the company went bankrupt. In fact, if I remember right, don't quote me on this, because it's been many, many years since I read about it and last played the game, but I think they actually were working on the PC port of it. Like, around the time they went bankrupt. In fact, I think maybe even the PC port might have come out after they went bankrupt. I think, they've made, I think they made one other game, like Simon the Sorcerer 3D or whatever, whatever that is. But this is pretty much the only thing they've done. And they disappeared right afterwards. So it's a strange blip in the radar. It just kind of came out, and then they disappeared. Just like that. Into the night. Hmm, <sighs> okay. There's a lot to say. So again, this is one of my favorite games of all time. I'm gonna kind of go into nostalgia a bit here, okay? So bear with me. I don't remember when I first played the game, but it was a long time ago. However, I do remember the last time I played it was probably three to five years ago. And that was on my old computer, which was running Windows Vista. And, well, let me explain my experience with the game. I love the setting, I love how creepy it is, and it just... Something about the game when I first played it made me extremely attached to it. There's just something about it I love. It, does so many, it did so many things that I just had never experienced in games at that point. It... The game basically doesn't give you a gun until you're really far into the game. Like, hours and hours into the game until you get a gun, if I remember right. Which completely blew my mind when I first played it. Because when I played it, you know, I, you know, I was young, I just played a lot of action games. So I came across this strange game and I was, you know, I was thinking, like, when am I gonna get a gun? When am I going to be shooting things? This is an action game, right? That's all I play. But then they didn't. They didn't give me a gun. And it was the most brilliant thing I've ever experienced at the time. It blew me away. I realized how tense it made everything. I didn't have a gun. I couldn't defend myself. It was one of the first games I ever played that actually made me helpless. And I loved it. So yes, I have major respect for this game. It is creepy, it is disturbing, it is weird. It's quirky. It's a, it's a true survival horror game. Truly. Now. 
This game also has some major, major issues. It is, even though I love it, I absolutely adore this game. But it is seriously freaking broken. It is a very rough diamond. It is messed up. In multiple ways. Okay, one way that it's messed up is technical. In technical terms. This game just does not play well with modern computers. Let me explain how it went when I, uh, when I last replayed it on my old computer that had Vista. Okay, here's how the game went. I got to some scene very close to the end of the game, and I had a repetitive crash that wouldn't allow me to progress. So I couldn't finish the game. So I went onto some forum, I found someone who was offering, I think, save games for the game. Emailed that person, they emailed me back their save, and I used that save, which was right after the, the scene where it was constantly crashing, and I used that to progress. And it was near the end of the game, so I went just a little bit further, got to the end of the game, and then guess what happened? The end was messed up! The end of the game was also broken. But of course, a save file can't fix that, because there's no way you can progress past the end. The end is the end. So yes, I had to stop, email some random person on the internet, get their save file to progress past that point. And then the ending was broken, so what I ended up doing is watching the ending on YouTube. And it was the worst quality video I've ever seen on YouTube in my freaking life. Like, it looked like someone had taken a really bad video camera, recorded their CRT screen, and then recorded it to a VCR, a VHS. And then somehow recorded the VHS feed to a computer and then uploaded it in glorious 240p. It was fucking terrible. I could barely even see what was happening. It was just like a mess of smears and pixels. It was horrible. And despite all of that, I still loved the game. I had to get someone's save file and I had to watch the ending on YouTube in terrible quality and I still love the game. That's how amazing it is in so many ways. And of course, that's tinted by nostalgia, because again, it was one of the first games of this kind of type. One of the first games that left me helpless and scared that I'd ever played. So I don't, I don't expect it to be brilliant now as I replay it, but I do love the game still. And even if it's not going to quite live up to what I remember it being, I'm still going to love it. Simply for what it meant to me before, but I'm suspecting that I'm still going to like it even now. Okay, so those are the technical issues with it on modern computers, but there's more. There's more that's wrong with this game. From a design perspective, it does some things horribly wrong. I might only talk about one. Okay, it has, it has one of the dumbest gameplay mechanics I've ever seen in a game. It is so mind-bogglingly stupid, it makes my head explode. And here, here it is. Alright, so this game has a sanity mechanic. That's not the stupid part, by the way. But it has a sanity mechanic where if you stare at... If you stare at disturbing things and you keep yourself in disturbing situations, it will reduce your sanity. I'm running off on memory here, by the way, so if I get these things slightly wrong, uh, forgive me. But I'm pretty sure this is right. So, you have to manage your sanity like a resource. In fact, if your sanity goes really low, I think you might actually, like, shoot yourself or something. I don't remember. If something bad happens, though. But yeah, think of kind of like Amnesia the Dark Descent, where your view starts to go all weird and you start to go crazy. I think once you get, like, super, super scared and insane, you even make noises that attract enemies to you and stuff like that. So yes, there's a sanity mechanic. And, <laughs> this is the funny part. The, uh, basically, how good you are at avoiding the stuff that makes you insane. In other words, how much you avoid looking at the weird things and how fast you go, basically. How fast you go through the game and how much you avoid looking at stuff. The stuff that makes you insane. Will affect your score. I don't remember the proper name for it, I don't know, the detective score or whatever. It's like an A, B, C, that sort of thing. And I think it's dependent on your sanity and also maybe even how fast you went through the game through the level. Now, that score is not just a random score. It means something. And here's what it means. And here's the bad mechanic. The score determines the ending of the game. I'm not joking. So basically, the longer you take in the game, the slower you are, and the more you look at the weird stuff that makes you insane, 
it will change your ending. But not just to a different ending, okay? No, it makes your ending worse. And by worse, I mean it gives you less of an ending. Like, imagine there's a full ending. Okay? And then you do poorly. It's sort of like it plays then, maybe, let's say, 50% of the ending and you just don't see the rest. I'm not joking. Let me drive home what I mean by this. The game actively encourages you to not experience the game. You see more of the ending. You get a more complete ending. If you rush through the game and don't look at stuff. If you get a really bad score, you get a really shitty ending that answers absolutely nothing. An extremely unsatisfying ending where... Yeah, it's just unsatisfying. So in other words, the players who slow down and take their time and experience everything the game has to offer and really look at things, you know, just seep themselves in the game, players like me, will get a shitty score at the end of the game and experience the least satisfying ending. Whereas players who rush through the game and don't look at anything and try to do a speed run will get a great score and they get to see the full ending. You know, if, if your sanity and stuff maybe give you a different ending that is equally meaningful, that would be a different case, but no. It simply decides how much of the ending you see. You literally get an incomplete ending if you don't have a good score. Which is possibly the single dumbest game mechanic I've ever seen in a game. A game mechanic that wants you to not experience the game and rush through it. What the hell were they thinking? I don't know. However... I have solved this problem, because this game's technical issues, which I mentioned previously, about it running very poorly on modern computers, has been at least hopefully partially fixed, if not fully fixed, by an unofficial patch that I am running. This patch did not exist when I originally played it, or when I last played it. Now it does, thankfully. And this unofficial patch, amongst other things, it should solve all the major problem areas of the game. Problem areas that cause constant crashes and stuff like that. And it's just a slew of other issues that it fixes as well. And it does that by actually kind of... It kind of does it by cheating, basically. Like, it kind of skips and cheats through scripts that are problematic rather than actually fixing them, because I guess it couldn't. So, keep in mind that this isn't going to be a 100% pure experience. It will be skipping really minor things that I don't think are too important. But yeah, it will be skipping some things that are problematic in the game. Um, and this unofficial, pat unofficial patch, one of the things it allows you to do is uh, force you to see the full ending at the end of the game no matter what your score is, which I have checked. And I encourage everyone, I will have a link to the unofficial patch in the description. If you're going to play this game, which I recommend, it's a very cool game, you can get it on Steam, even. Um, definitely play with the unofficial patch and definitely check that box. See the full ending. Because anything else is just stupid. Okay, is there anything else to say? Um, let's see. I think that might be it. Also, just for, um, just for fun, I have the manual here. I actually have the box copy of the game. I got it before it even came out on Steam. Here are the requirements for the game. It's always fun to read this for old games. 256 megabytes of RAM. Ooh, Pentium 3, 800 megahertz. Damn! And 2 gigabytes of hard drive space. And a video card with 128 megabytes of memory. I don't know if I can run this game. Okay. Are we ready? How long did that take? Like 10 minutes or something? Yeah. Okay. Are you ready to go? Are you ready to delve deep into the dark corners of the earth? Let's go. between worlds, 
And it is there I have finally glimpsed upon what lives in the dark corners of the earth. Game tips are currently active. If you don't want to see any game tips, blah, 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 blah. Yep. Six and a half years ago. Massachusetts, 6th of September, 1915. Robert, this had better be good. What's the beef? Sorry, Jack. We had to call. This fellow will only talk to you. Name's Victor Holt. Don't know any. Victor? He's the leader of this weird cult that moved in here a few months back. Got about 20 followers. They've been causing trouble all over town. Stealing, going through folks' trash. Hanging around outside people's homes at all hours. No one ever presses charges, though. They're a screwy bunch. They've got the locals scared. So tonight, we were just passing, you know, doing the normal rounds, when we heard gunshots fired from their property. Gunshots? Hang on there. No one said anything about gunshots. Who have we got out here? Eh, yeah, just me, Nichols, and a few new recruits. Well, that's just great. Lead the way, Robert. I'd better check out this crazy gang of yours. All right, here we are. A couple things to mention. Um, this game actually, in the launcher, allows you to select 19... What is it, 1920 by 1080? Yeah. Yeah, 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 I'm coming, I'm coming, hold on, I'm explaining to the audience, just give me a second. Um, it actually allows you to select 1080p, which is what I'm running at, in the launcher, so it seems to natively support it. How- shut up! Jesus. However, here's the thing. I'm pretty sure it's just stretching the image to be widescreen, because this does not look widescreen to me, it, it looks very stretched. Which you will especially notice when you see doors that seem far wider than normal. And plus, this this game also has a very low field of view. So between the stretching and the low field of view, it, uh, it looks kind of sickening to look around. So, sorry about that. Uh, there's nothing I can do. I mean, I guess I could run in a non-widescreen re widescreen resolution, but I'm not going to do that. And you actually can increase the field of view inside of that unofficial batch that I used. However, I've already done that, and it doesn't seem to work, so I guess I'm out of luck. Also, this is the first game I've ever played that actually has rain effects on your screen. Look at that. I wonder what the first game to do that was. I'm coming, I'm coming. What's up?
Hmm, I think he's communicating something to me. I think he wants me to go up. Something must be wrong. I think I saw him. Evening, Jack. Glad you could join the freak show. How's it looking, Henry? I don't like this one bit, Jack. Check the alley on the right. Victor Holt's over there in the shadows. He's waiting for you. Can we trust him? Nope, but we've got you covered. You better take it slowly, though. They're a bit twitchy. Yeah, one of the really... Try to stay calm. You better hurry, Jack. Okay, fine, fine, fine. I'll go. Oh, shit. There is a shootout. Whew. Okay. As you can see, the doors are extraordinarily wide, so I'm pretty sure they're stretched. Shit, Phillips been shot, he's dead. Oh, that's from one of the cultists. Alright, one of the cultists has been shot. It's an old stove. Okay, I probably shouldn't examine while people are shooting. <laughs> Let's go upstairs. Let's take care of the problem. That's simple, strange. Looks almost like a flaming eye. I should take a closer look. This is the save system in the game. Yep. You can only save at designated points, aside from auto saves. Which is, at once, one of the good things about the game, and also one of the bad things, which you will see later, trust me. It will be an issue. Keep shooting! Alright, where are these pieces of shit? Sounds like they're over here. At last! <gasps> think I'll keep my head down, just in case the, they think I'm a cultist. get his weapon? I'm gonna do it. Yes, 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 yes. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Don't shoot. I'm unarmed. Ah. We've been expecting you, Mr. Wall. Well, shit. He was about to tell me something. There's still someone left? A key. Could come in handy. Okay. Oh. You picked up an... Yep. Uh, open the interface. Uh, okay. That's this, right? That's a wonderful sound effect. I guess I go up to something and just press it in the inventory. I'm not really sure. I don't actually remember how to play. It's been too long. Alright. They're still shooting. Who are they shooting at? It won't budge. It won't open. Wait, is that because it's locked or just... It'll never open. The lock on the store is broken. Oh, okay. It's locked. That's what it unlocks. It's unlocked. Well, before I do that, uh... Where... What are they shooting at? I can't open it. Damn. Looks like I'm stuck. Might as well check this place out. Okay, I guess I'm going to examine this place while they're still shooting. I don't know, seems like I should take out whatever threat they're shooting at, but alright. The fire is still burning. This blasphemous image makes me feel uneasy. It's stuff like this that makes me love the game, just the weirdness of everything. Like, look at this imagery. A powerful painting of some cosmic horror. Yep, that pretty much describes the Cthulhu mythos, doesn't it? Cosmic horror. It looks like an eye, but the rest of the painting has no real shape. It's just terrifying, these weird things that you don't understand. That's an unusual design. 
a depiction of some alien creature. Hmm, what is this? As I continue to translate the necotic fragments, I become more and more eager to contact my Yithian masters. These beings truly are gods to us. Their intellect and knowledge surpasses ours in ways impossible to comprehend. I know now just how insignificant mankind is in the universe, a doomed and simple species thrown up as a side effect of an experiment by the Elder Things. It is a blessing that such flawed creatures as ourselves have such a short and limited future. First journal, already not easy, thank you. Yeah, again, it's stuff like that that makes me love this game so much. Just, it, it, it really is terrifying, these strange designs you don't understand. And that's like the, one of the key underpinnings of the horror that H.P. Lovecraft wrote. Is of being, even though I haven't read it, I, I'm pretty sure this is correct. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. It's about being insignificant. It's about being not able to comprehend something, driven insane. Which is something I find very terrifying. Those are just perfect ingredients for horror, not being able to understand something. The uncomprehensible. It's terrifying. Because as soon as you understand something, it's not terrifying. But when you don't know, it's what you don't know. It's what you don't see. It's that that scares you. Those are pictures of... Wait, is that me? It's pictures of, like, cops and detectives. Nothing of interest. Jack. Yeah, Jack. And they've been referencing me. Like, like Jack or Mr. Walters, you're finally here, something like that. They've been expecting me. I don't understand. I'm in all of these photos. All of them. There must be some kind of mistake. Why would they want me here? It must be an old case. Something I've forgotten. Some screwball with a grudge, maybe. Think. I've got to think. And here's the sanity mechanic in action. Which is something that I both love and also kind of dislike. I really like it when horror games mess with you, mess with your sanity, mess with your ability to perceive things by messing with your view and stuff like that. So distortions and all sorts of things like that, I really like, but it's super awkward when he appears to be going insane and panting heavily and it sounds like he's about to pass out. All these photos and clippings are of me. I just don't get it. It's really awkward when you're about to pass out and you're going insane, and yet, the voice actor sounds perfectly calm. Like, just right there. He was going crazy, but yet the voice actor sounded perfectly calm. That's super awkward. It's... They don't really fit together. It's weird. Wait a minute. Day 13. Leave home. Something... something. Leave... something. Lunch. Something bank. Back to station. Follow suspect. Yeah, they've been tracking me. They've been watching me. Another key. This should fit the door across the hall. Uh, no offense, Jack, but how do you know that? From the dates on some of these clippings, this crazed mob must have been following me for years. Jesus. I'm a detective, and I had no idea.
Alright, before I open that door, well, let's go upstairs. Let's start from here. Poisoning by the looks of it. Maybe they killed themselves? He's dead. They're all dead. Suicide. Or rather, mass suicide. These nuts had some serious issues. As you can see, I'm starting to go insane. I can't open it. He's dead. They're all dead. A diary. This will make interesting reading. Yes, it will. Before I read them, though, let me explore the rest of this place. Nope, nothing of interest. Alright, what do we have? Yeah, you can see my heart rate is spiking. Alright, diary. September 6th. Well, let me try that again. September 6th, 1915. A local disturbance. Evening. I guess I'm becoming a victim of my own success. After closing the last five cases so fast, the papers have been calling me a local hero. But I just had a run of lucky hunches. That's all. I'm just another cop doing his job. So there's a disturbance at a local residence. It's probably just a bunch of kids hopped up on moonshine. Why call in a detective? Oh wow, there's actually more to it? Cool. I almost missed these little icons down here. Maybe the uniform boys are sore at being out in this weather and they want to share the joy with the local hero. It wouldn't be the first good-natured prank I've had to take since those newspaper reports. I don't know, though. Something doesn't feel right. It's more than just a regular bad feeling. It's hard to explain, but it's strong. I'm probably just tired. Those dreams don't help. I can't remember when I lost when I last got a good night's sleep. It must be a month, at least. Right about the time I started my run of lucky hunches. The dreams have been getting worse lately. I'm almost afraid to close my eyes. Bourbon helped at first, but not anymore. The lack of sleep must be affecting my nerves. Well, jitters or not, I better get going. Hmm. So last time he uh, had a good night's sleep was from right before he had his run of lucky hunches. Collection of general evidence. Alright, what's in Mythos? No, nothing there. Okay, general evidence. Podium sermon. As I continue to translate... Oh, I've already read this, haven't I? Yeah, I've already read the... He already, he already read that, yeah. Yep. Blessing us such a lot of creatures as ourselves. Yep, yep, yep. The Boston Globe, 20th August, 1909. Enlightened or duped? Inside Boston's strangest church. Those of our readers who live near its headquarters in an ordinary-looking looking Boston residence will need no introduction to the Fellowship of the Yith, or whatever the cult's name is. For those who have not encountered this mysterious semi-religious group before, a few words of explanation are necessary. Since our country's founding upon the basis of religious freedom, its shores have been home to many small religious groups outside the mainstream. No small number are headquartered in the states of New England, where the pilgrims themselves sought a new world free of religious prosecution. But the question must be asked, at what point does a religion become a cult, and its trusting adherents, not to mention its blameless neighbors, become victims? That is the question this journal poses in regards to the Fellowship of Yith. In a month-long investigation, our intrepid reporters have diligently sought out the truth behind this so-called church. Its origins are somewhat mysterious, the more so since the group's leaders declined to be interviewed or to assist our investigation in any way. However, it seems that the Fellowship was founded more than 20 years ago by one Victor Holt, based on a revelation he had received from beyond the confines of this world. 
Holt has not been seen for almost six years, if his followers apparently believe that he is com communing with the mysterious powers behind his faith, and that he is shortly to return with new insights and teachings. All this sounds like a harmless, if eccentric, spiritual group, little different from many others. However, those who make their homes near to the Fellowship's headquarters tell a different, more sinister story. The adherents of this obscure sect are to be found loitering on street corners, casting menacing glances at their innocuous neighbors and frequently engaging in acts of petty crime, which the local police seem powerless to prevent or redress. Strange lights have been observed burning in the windows of the old house at all hours of the day and night. They change color unpredictably and cast weird, unintelligible shadows. Even more disturbing are the noises which have been heard to issue from within the mysterious building. They include chanting, unearthly music, and, worst of all, screams like those of lost souls in agony. Many of these sects' neighbors are convinced that its services include human sacrifice or similar atrocities. Those few who dared complain to the police were told that, because the house is private property, and because there's no concrete evidence of any wrongdoing, the most they can do is file a noise complaint. Are the horrors of Salem being reenacted in our city more than two centuries on? Is this fellowship of Yith engaging in unspeakable and criminal acts of worship involving torture and sacrifice? Why is nothing being done to ease the fear and distress they caused the local community? A source within the police department, speaking on the condition of anonymity, tell the Globe that the Fellowship is suspected of involvement in a number of local crimes, but so far the lack of evidence and the reluctance of nervous witnesses to come forward have thwarted any official investigation. Very well, we say. Where the police cannot or will not investigate, the Globe shall continue to act in the interest of Boston's citizens, fearlessly exposing the truth about the so-called Church and its followers. Our findings will be published in these pages over the following months, so that all may know the truth. Editor's Note It is with great sorrow that the Globe announces the death of reporter Howard Edelstone, who is leading the paper's investigation into the Fellowship of... I think that's a misspell. It should be Yith, right? It says Yig. When he apparently drowned in Boston Harbor, the coroner has ruled his death a suicide. Our condolences go out to his family. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> this game, by the way, is... There's so much about it I like. I'm not sure what to mention right now and what to just kind of wait until it comes up. Let me just say this. It goes places. It phys physically goes places where you would never expect it to. It is very surprising. Nothing is going to stay the same, trust me. Like, it's not just going to be... Yeah, you'll see, the structure of it is very atypical. It's very strange. Yeah, it's really interesting, you'll see. We're gonna go to some crazy places. Places you would never expect it to go. Diary of a Cult Member, August 20th, 1915. We have been watching him now for two months. I can feel my anticipation growing as the day of contact draws near. Victor has not yet divulged his final plan for bringing Mr. Walters to us. All I know is that we must succeed. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. His final plan for bringing Mr. Walters to us. The reason I'm here is because he specifically called for me. So he's succeeded. He was trying to get me here at this exact moment. He wanted this. Why? And... By the way, I don't actually remember. I, it's been a long time since I played this game. I remember some major story points. And I remember, like, the set pieces and stuff, but I don't remember the specifics about the story, so I actually genuinely don't remember. August 24th, 1915. The sermon today was inspiring. Victor enlightened us with the story of the great race, transcending the bounds of time to visit his dreams. Of the conscious things on this earth, and in the ocean depths, we are but servants to a greater design. I can only hope that my faith during these last days will win me favor when our masters step through the gate. August 29th. The experiments below have claimed one more of our order. Another volunteer is needed, but many are willing. We are truly blessed through our faithful service, now that his coming grows so close. September 3rd. The preparations are complete, and Victor's plan is in motion. He will arrive soon. 
Surely by, surely by now he must suspect his true nature, or at least question the nature of his gifts. I believe the gifts he's referring to is the fact that right around the, when the dreams started and I wasn't able to get any sleep is when my hunches came. My hunches <laughs> that allowed me to solve so many cases. That is my gifts. September 6th. 6th. He has come. Finally, it begins. Yep. It won't open. All right, time to go down here. It's unlocked. The hell is that noise? It's someone groaning. For nutcases, they seem quite literate. <laughs> True. The hell is that noise? It appears to be a private study area. The drawer holds an ancient manuscript. The symbols on the front seem to be written in classical Greek. Can I read it? Is that in here? Yeah, here we go. Mythos tombs and manuscripts. The Nakotica. This manuscript looks medieval, but claims to be uh, a translation from classical Greek of a far older work from before the time of the first humans. The pages are stained, faded, and even burned in some places, making reading it difficult. The legible sections tell the history of unthinkably distant antiquity. They speak of races so strange as to be beyond human comprehension, and wars fought across vast gulfs of time and space. There are concepts so utterly alien that they sound like absolute madness. Time travel, flying polyps, mental projection, Great race of Yith. It makes you dizzy just to read it. Again, this is what I love about this game so much. I feel like I'm just touching, like I'm stepping my toe, like touching my toes into the water of some great, vast, disturbing, horrible, incomprehensible thing. I feel like there's no way I could ever understand it or understand what's going on. It's like I'm. It's like I'm grasping at the foot of some massive creature and I look up at it trying to find its face but it's too far up for me to even see it like it doesn't even know I'm here that's the feeling that I get from the Cthulhu mythos stuff is a, a feeling of utter insignificance and I love that it's perfect for a horror game it's just so moody There are definitely some strange sounds coming from this side of the room. What the hell? That is an interesting secret place. It's not even really hidden. You just walk to the end of a hallway and you fall down? Uh, okay. No, it does not. Uncrap. Well, that's crap. just swell. Now I can't get back up. That doesn't sound good. By the way, I want to mention... Uh, am I gonna die if I stay here? No, I think I'm okay. One of the really cool things about this game, and also one of the problematic things, is how cinematic it is. It kind of borrows from the another world train of thought, where they built some really cool action scenes that honestly are, well, really, really cool. But it takes from another world in that... The way they kind of do it is that if you mess up the scene at all, like if you do it in a way the director didn't exactly intend, 
you have to restart again and again and again and again. You have to do it perfectly or the scene restarts and breaks. So it's one of the coolest things about the game and also one of the worst things. It's really frustrating when you have to keep restarting because you didn't play the scene like they wanted you to. But when you do play it correctly, it comes out really well. Oh god. Got crushed by the... This place is falling apart. He's dead. The beam must have fallen and crushed his skull. Yep, and the same thing's gonna happen to me soon. Let's go. What the hell is this place? A mor- what? What is a morgue doing under this building? This sink would be used for scrubbing up. Dead bodies, and plenty of them. Something dreadful has been going on down here. Oh my god, it fell out. From the markings, he must have been one of their own. I wonder if he volunteered. Ugh. They said they had no, um, no shortage of volunteers. They are nothing if not faithful. They are, or were, devoted servants. Seems like these cabinets are used for storing chemicals and medical equipment. I hear a computer. What is that? What the hell? Um... Good God! What the hell is all this? Is this entire chest cut open? I can see his rib cage. Oh. It's a crystal. Are all of his organs external? Oh my god, his his head's cut open. His organs are not in his body anymore. They're all separated. What the fuck? Oh. Jesus. I've never seen equipment like this before. I, I don't even know what these symbols mean. I don't really want to press them, but what else can I do? Oh wait, there's another door here. It goes further down. Anything over here? Whoops. I don't... I, should I press something? I don't think I should... No. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. This tunnel feels like it's gonna collapse at any moment. Crap. Now I have to press something. Oh, that's all it does? Ah, it's mm. too hot to pick up. Whoops. Alright, in that case, let me go back up. Let me see what that does. I mean, it's gonna activate something. The question is what? Oh, shit! I'm not touching it again. I immediately regret doing that. Did I just... Did I just kill him? The machine must have overloaded. He's dead. God damn it, why did I touch that? My original my original decision was correct. I didn't know what it did, so I wasn't going to touch it. Why did I touch it? <laughs> oh my god. Although, I mean, granted, he was dead anyway. His organs were outside of his body. He wouldn't have lasted long. See, this is what I mean about this game taking you to strange places. Did you expect this? Did you expect some sort of a bizarre alien device? and room in the basement of this place? I certainly didn't when I first played this game. The environments are just so bizarre and fascinating.
I don't even know what I'm staring at down there. Is that a void? Just like blackness or... Or is that just like really dark water? Hmm, this thing needs a crystal. This looks like a gigantic portal. I think I'm immediately going to regret this. There's no power. Never mind, I don't. Wait a minute, can I take the crystal from the guy that I overloaded now that th that thing's not running? Did I have to kill that poor guy to get his crystal? The crystal's still warm. Oh god, you do. Okay, well I don't feel as bad now. I was going to have to do it anyway. It looks like something's been removed from it. Here we go. The Diary of Jack Walters, 6th of February, 1922. It's been more than six years since I entered that strange house in Boston. But to me, it was just five months ago. Amnesia, the doctors called it. Probably brought on by acute mental stress. I remember investigating the far side of the library. There was screaming. According to the police report, they had searched the house for hours, only to find me later collapsed on the floor. When my eyes opened and I spoke, my colleagues recoiled in fear. There was something unnatural in my voice and blank gaze. They committed me to Arkham Asylum, where I was diagnosed with severe schizophrenia. As it became clear that I presented no danger to either myself or others, I was released from the asylum's care. I have learned little of my activities in the six years that followed. The accounts I've been able to piece together show much of my time was spent in travel and study. I maintain a fanatical infatuation with the occult, delving deep into volumes concerning witch cults and dark legends, often in languages unfamiliar to my own. When I reawakened five months ago, exactly six years after entering that house in Boston, no trace was left of what had been a secondary personality. I was myself again, or at least what I believed myself to be. Return to normal life has been a painful process. In recent days, my dreams have been plagued by cosmic landscapes, and I've become fearful of my own reflection. I am beginning to remember things from that day, more than six years past, that I've told Jack Walters. Uh, hello, Mr. Walters. My name's Arthur Anderson. I need your help finding a missing person. I don't take that kind of job. Uh, did you get my package? Um, uh, hold on.
What exactly do you want from me, Mr. Anderson? Um, it's one of my store managers, you see. Brian's his name. Brian Burnham. Nice lad. He disappeared recently from the first national grocery store in Innsmouth. Innsmouth? I never heard of it. Uh, it's a small fishing town on the coast, not far from Arkham. Uh, I'd like to see you in person before you leave. Hold on there a minute. I didn't agree to take this j uh, What the hell? I'll be here all day anyway. New client. February 6th, 1922. Night. I have a new client. Mr. Arthur Anderson, the regional manager of the First National Grocery Store chain. It appears that the First National Grocery in Innsmouth was recently burglarized, and its manager, one Brian Burnham, is missing. From what I've been able to gather, Burnham is something of a young rogue, a friend of the family. Mr. Anderson, Mr. Anderson gave him the job as a favor. Burnham is looking like the prime suspect for the robbery, but there are a few things that don't add up. Not to Anderson, and not for me. For instance, why would Burnham force an entry into the store when he had a full set of keys, free access to the cash register, and the combination to the back office safe? To misdirect any investigation? If that was his plan, why did he disappear? Following my conversation with Mr. Anderson, I found out what I could about the ancient town of Innsmouth. For generations, the crumbling seaport and its people have been shunned by neighboring communities. Outsiders are unwelcome there, and there are superstitious tales of a strange element in the town's oldest families. They are of mixed blood, so these stories go. Whatever that's supposed to mean. The usual hick town prejudice, no doubt. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing because I've played the game before. <laughs> After making a brief visit to Innsmouth, my client came away distrustful of the local authorities. He isn't buying their line that Burnham robbed the place and wants to know what happened to him. Only one bus goes to Innsmouth, and tomorrow afternoon I'll be on it. It feels good to have a purpose after five months trying to break through my amnesia. I also feel a little apprehensive. Maybe it's the wild stories about the town, or maybe it's just because I haven't had a case in so long. Shadow Over Innsmouth. I believe that's the name of a short story by H.P. Lovecraft. Yeah. Crumbling Seaport Town. Lots of seas. I just... Just the name, Innsmouth. Is somehow creepy. Innsmouth. Let, let me just say, Innsmouth is one of the most brilliant parts of the game. It is such a perfect... Beginning to the game is not even funny. I will uh, show you more when we get into it. I like how the text and loading screens you can't even read because it, the game is so old it loads so fast. A visit to the old town. I do not expect the reader to believe what I'm about to relate. Any sane mind must reject such a fantastic tale. And yet, I, from the start of your own investigation, it ends with you... And it's done. <laughs> you don't even have time to read it. Innsmouth. 7th of February, 1922. <laughs> <laughs> Driver, how far to the stop? It's almost there. I'll drop you at the town square in Innsmouth. Why lock the gates? Keeps out wanderers looking for work. You know what those folks like that interfering with our affairs. Is the bus from Arkham always this empty? Aye, and we prefer it that way. Not many come to Innsmouth. But what about trade? Surely the port needs business. Innsmouth has the means to look after them all. to the line. All right. 
here we go. <laughs> oh, I'm just uh, there's I have so many memories of this place. So here's one of the brilliant things about this game and about this intro. It's pacing, at least in the beginning. I don't remember the rest of the game, but in the beginning is brilliant. Remember what I said about not being given a gun for a very long time? Yeah, that's... They know how to pace the game. They don't just, like, throw you into action. They don't just give you a gun and say, you know, shoot something right away. They build it up. They know how to build up the creepiness. I mean, look at this. I just came to this freaking weird town. Innsmouth. And just... Just the mood of this place. I mean, look at my bus driver. Could you direct me to the first national grocery store? I hear they have a shop in town. I don't know nothing about that. Oh, well, you see, I'm looking for a young lad called Brian Burnham. I'm a friend of the family. He worked in the store. I don't know who you're talking about, fellow. There's something very, very wrong with this Chit town. to him's gonna get me no place fast. There's something horribly wrong with this town. And the game just lets you loose in the town. To just drink it all in. And look at it for yourself. I love it. It's brilliant. Here's another lovely citizen of Innsmouth. He practically looks like a corpse. I'm looking for Brian Burnham. Can't help you. Yeah. There's something wrong with this town. Do you know the Burnham lad? He worked in the First National. Can't rightly say it, I know him. There's something very, very wrong with this town. This statue commemorates the men who fought in the Revolutionary War. Yeah. The Headless Statue. There's something very wrong with this... town. Just the mood of this game is brilliant. Ah, you can't come down here. Sorry. The police clearly don't want me snooping around. I need to be more careful. Please line. Do not cross. Hey, you look almost normal. This town's deserted. Where is everybody? Just leave me be, stranger. That might be the most normal person I've seen here. Hold on, let's go um ask around in this hotel. The what does that say? Gil Gilman? Wait, is this a hotel? This, oh, it is a hotel. Okay, wow. It, this place is a shithole. Look at it. It's just falling apart. It's rotting. Hi. Evening. Hi. My name's Jack Walters. I'm just visiting. You don't say, sir. Gilman. Charlie Gilman. I run this here hotel of an evening. You got any rooms? I'd not rightly know that for sure. All habits cleaning rooms at present. Them's from out of town can leave a horrid mess. <laughs> hmm. Talking to this fellow's getting me nowhere, and he's more than a touch creepy. If I need a room, then I'm desperate, and I'll come back. love the mood of this game so much. This dark and twisted and messed up town. Outsiders coming, snooping around what they wanted. Alright, what is this? 
Looks like a relatively fancy building. Eso Esoteric Order of Dagon? Uh, interesting church? It won't budge. What's down here? Town Square, South Street. It won't budge. Yeah, this place is practically a ghost town. Washington Street. Hmm, that looks promising. What's in there? Whoa! The... That was a body being dragged through the door. There's something very the wrong with this closed. town. I don't know if I want to go down that alleyway. Let's go over here first. Excuse me, sir. I'm looking for Brian. I never heard of no burn up. It's a gas station, I think. won't open. Nah, it's too late. Everything's closed. Uh... Is that... It's a hanging woman. There's something very wrong with this town. And the gates are locked. Whoa, is that... Someone who actually looks normal? Hi. You look out of place. Do you have anything to say? She doesn't. What is she doing here? She looks incredibly out of place. Evening. Uh, the name's Jack Walters. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss... Miss will do for now. Welcome to Innsmouth, Mr. Walters. Thanks, I think. Take my advice. Do what you must and then leave. Tonight, this port does not cater well to visitors. While I appreciate your concern, Miss, I can handle lousy hospitality. Very well, Mr. Walters. She sounds... resigned. This doll seems more open than some folks around these parts. But she isn't gonna talk to me right now. She seems resigned to whatever's going to happen. Like, it's inevitable. Storage depot. It's shut. It won't open. Nah, this whole place is locked down. Alright, what's down here? This will probably meet up with the alleyway that I didn't go down. It won't budge. The window looks into some old passageway. Alright, what's down here? Washington Street. It's just an advertisement for the local Methodist Church. 
In the soul and scowl and smile. Ah, my voice. Ooh. These are the joys of the noble and the brave. Who love a life in the tempest strife. In the home of the mountain wave. When the driving rain of the hurricane puts the lights of the lighthouse out. And the growling thunder sounds is gong. And the world winds battle out. Huh? Who's that there? Oh, can you spare a few pennies, young mister? I can give you something for your generosity. Who are you? Zadok, that be my name. Though it's too few years it now. Zadok Allen. Do you know a Brian Burnham? Just a youngin. Worked over the store. He's gone. Killed, I reckon. Killed? What makes you think that? Them's from out of town running a store. Taking business from the Order of Dagon. They'd not accept that. What else can you tell me about this port? You just bring old Zadok a bottle of something nice, and old Zadok will fill your ears. All right, need to get him some alcohol. Ha ha! Won't open. That's the valiant But where am I gonna get that? It's just a trash can. It's just a trash can. Nothing of interest. I mean, wait, wait. Do I have one on me? No. The old drunkard knows something. I don't think it would take much to get his tongue wagging. Yeah, where the hell am I going to find a drink, though? Everything's closed. Hmm. Alright, this place is closed off, too. Excuse me, officer. Excuse me, constable. Jack Walters. Uh, ropes. Alien ropes. What you want? Could you help out a stranger to this fine port? Are you being funny? No, not at all. I'm after directions to the First National. I hear they have a store in town. Innsmouth don't take too kindly to them from out of town. Get lost, stranger. Lovely. He looks and sounds like a demon. I would just like to point out that on the side of his neck, if you look closely, look look closely at the side of his neck, looks a bit, um, gilly, doesn't it? They look a bit gilly. It's a seaport town. Yeah. They look a bit fishy. 